Hello and welcome to The Ordinary Extraordinary, the show for ordinary people to tell their extraordinary stories. I'm your host, Jen Krenzman, and joining us today, we have Andrew Puntini, who is one of the fire captains here in Foxborough. Welcome, Andrew. Thanks for having me. So let's just get right into it. You've been in the fire department and interested in fire for a long time. What led you to want to be interested in becoming a firefighter? Uh, my, so my grandfather was one of the first career firefighters in Ashland, Massachusetts. Um, he was actually appointed a captain um, at his, as his first assignment coming off from a full uh, call department to go into the full-time career department. Oh my goodness. So um, I always looked up to him and his story and uh, that just kind of drove me towards research and public safety. Okay. That's really cool. So your career, did you like your father or anything do the fire thing or it was just no, grandfather my father to didn't. you? No, my father didn't. It was just my, my grandfather. Yeah, my grandfather to me. Okay. And so you started off where? Like so high school? I start, so I grew up in Ashland, Massachusetts, still where I live. And um, in high school, I noticed uh, there was a post in one day um, about a junior firefighter program. The fire, uh, they call it Fire Explorers. And uh, I, I signed up. I think I was probably a junior in high school and uh, it was a great program. We, we'd go in a couple times a month, train on basic firefighting equipment, and uh, oh, cool. you know, it was great. We had, we had a lot of guidance in how to pursue um, a career. So uh, once I was 18, I got on the call fire department in Ashland, and then it, when I was 20 years old, I was uh, appointed here in Foxborough full-time. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So <clears throat> does that mean like you also go through like, I don't know if it's the same as TV shows, like the whole fire academy type of thing. Is that, yep. so, you know, a thing? Yep. So when I was a call firefighter, um, I took as many fire academy classes as I could. And I tested to uh, a call firefighter one, two. It's a national basic certification. And then once I was uh, hired full time here in Foxborough, I went to the Massachusetts Firefighting Recruit School, which was 12 weeks. Um, oh my. You know, we were able to go home at night. It wasn't an overnight program, okay. but uh, every day for 12 weeks uh, was their basic recruit program. Oh, can I ask, what was that like? <laughs> it was uh, it was a lot of fun, especially where I was so young. Um, you know, it was something everybody looks forward to doing when they first get on the fire department. Um, it's I, I'm not a veteran, um, I, and they try to set it up somewhat military. Um, we'd have a roll call in the morning where we have to line up and get a uh, uniform inspection, mm -hmm. uh, PT every morning, and then it'd be various between our uh, classroom and hands-on training. Oh, okay. So do they like throw you like first day into like just, you know, going on fighting fires and you know the... Actually, believe it or not, one of the very first days they have just an introduction to fire. And uh, I don't think it was day one, but it was within the first week where um, they bring the entire class into one of the burn buildings and they'll light a fire in it while we have all our protective gear on uh, just to kind of, I, I think it's for them to see our reaction and how we handle the situation. And so going back to it, you've said now you've, been in Foxborough for since you were 20. Correct. That's yeah, presumably eight, just a, over 18 years. 18 years. Yep. So, how was it getting into Foxborough as you know so young and growing into it in for 18 years? Uh, it, 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 it's it's been a, it's been a great challenge. Um, I've had a lot of fun in the, here in Foxborough, and uh, I have nothing but great things to say about the department. Um, I was really fortunate in the time I came on. Um, we were still operating out of the old fire station at 40, okay. uh, yeah, 40 School Street in the Common. So I was able to work out of that for about a year, year and a half before we moved to the new public safety building. So um, I was fortunate. Where I saw, I've seen a lot of transition in the 18 years. Mm. Um, you know, we started as a six-man shift and we would drop to four and still dispatch ourselves. So oh we'd, re we'd be responding with uh, three guys on the road. Um, you know, and I was brand new, so I was pretty green. <laughs> and uh, so it was, uh, you know, trial by fire for lack of better terms, <laughs> where today we're operating at eight and nine man shifts around the clock. Oh, wow. And so, okay, so you have the Foxborough <clears throat> here and you've been working for 18 years. So can you tell me what if, you accomplished? What are some of your the best accomplishments that you've had in these incredible 18 years so far? Um, there's, pr there's a few. Uh, w one of the ones I'm proud of, and not necessarily just for what the program turned into, was uh, w where I started as a fire explorer in Ashland, we brought the program here to Foxborough in 2009. Oh, okay. 
Um, so it's a division of the Boy Scouts of America, and it uh, it encourages youth from the age of uh, 14 to 20 to their 21st birthday um, to participate in some sort of career. So it could be an explorer program for a studio like this, it could be the police department, it could oh, be the fire department, it could be anything. So um, we were able to bring it in as a fire department. We had, I think we had an initial group of um, five kids oh, wow. and uh, it's fluctuated up and down between, you know, having six or eight to about 15 different youths involved in the oh, program. Wow. But since 2009, I think we've had about 15 career hires no um, way. out of the program. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, so uh, a bunch of the guys on Foxborough right now uh, started off in that Fire Explorer program and um, also through other various towns. I know there's, uh, there's guys in uh, Plainville, Walpole, Hyannis, um, Norfolk at one point, um, and I, I know I'm forgetting others. Oh, but, sure. Uh, yeah, so uh, they, people have, you know, really expanded out from the program. Um, I. I relinquished the reins um, a while ago to a couple of the other firefighters, but it's just really nice to see that it's continuing on, it's still strong, and uh, the community seems to get something out of it. And you were one of the people who created it, or just like yeah, helped so form it? Help, uh, help form it. So okay. myself and a couple of the other guys um, brought it to the chief's attention. It was something we were interested mm -hmm. in, and he fully supported us. That's and awesome. uh, yeah, so. That's so awesome. And I know recently there's been some other, you know, you've got the recent accreditation yep. and stuff like that. Yep, so uh, we're uh, the first municipal fire department in Massachusetts to be um, nationally accredited um, through the, uh, um, th through a national agency. And it's, it's, it, it was quite the process, it took us about five years. And COVID, oh COVID was in the middle of it. Um, Assistant Chief Buckley uh, really spearheaded the program. Um, and you know, I helped him out as much as I possibly could. But um, it, it was a long process and the way to sum it up the shortest would be, uh, you know, it, it's a system that proves that we're in a constant state of improvement. We're always looking for the, to do the next best mm -hmm. thing. We're always looking to improve, we're, we're not static. Um, we're always looking to improve. So in this, th this accreditation helps affirm that. And did you have to do anything yourself as, you know, captain over there to help get this accreditation, well, the actual accomplishment, you know? Yeah, it was, so it was a, it was a, lot, of, uh, a lot of data mining. Um, so oh. we, have, uh, we have a response matrix and how we respond to, into, into certain calls. And, uh, you know, the accreditation agency, they don't want to hear, um, you know, we respond to this call just because they want reasons and standards and research of why we respond to certain incidents. So uh, really trying to bring that together, research it, uh, bundle it up, and then also, uh, you know, mine through, um, you know, thousands of lines of Excel data of, uh, you know, trying to sort and, and graph um, to make uh, response times and to show, uh, to show our performance in the community. I've been over there when I did your interview about the uh, restoration of the old fire trucks, and yep. that system over there is pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty it's, in depth. So we're uh, we really try to harness technology. Um, everybody's everybody's connected through their uh, smartphones. All the trucks have computers in them. Um, there's uh, station boards, there's televisions all throughout the station that will light up when we get an incident and give us incident details as we're as we're walking out to the trucks. Um, so yeah, we really try to harness technology and uh, and uh, you know it makes us better responders and it makes the community safer. Yeah, wow, it's it's so impressive. Seriously, it's I think there's so many people who are so inspired, but also just like in awe of your profession. I, I for, hitting the mic, I for what included. Uh, so maybe along those lines, are there any, you know, calls over the years that have, you know, come to mind off, off hand? Uh, I'm not sure if I can think of, um, a couple individual calls, um, but, I think it's I think it's the um, combination of everything. Uh, you know, we're we're pretty diverse here in Foxborough as far as our response types. Um, we're an ALS department, so uh, we're all paramedics. So we run the Advanced Life Support Ambulance. Um, some of the most rewarding calls have been being part of that team on the ambulance mm. and uh, you know helping helping somebody sick to the hospital and uh, trying to you know trying to make a difference in our uh, transport. You know, whether it's um, 
10 minutes to Sturdy Hospital in Attleboro or driving into Boston or down to Rhode Island. Oh, wow. So um, that's been some of the more, those are probably some of the more meaningful calls. Um, maybe some of the more flashy calls. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we had, a, uh, we had an ice rescue. Um, that was probably, I was looking for the years, probably 2013, 2014. We had uh, two individuals ice fishing in the spring and uh, they went through the ice. So we oh, had to suit goodness. up and go, and go get them uh, and go remove them um, from the uh, broken ice. So, and oh then, my uh, goodness. yeah, and then there's been various fires and car accidents throughout town that are, uh, you know, sure. um, v very uh, engaging with adrenaline and, yeah. uh, you know, you try to, you try to soak in as much as you can during those moments. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah. Speaking of that adrenaline, like, this is like a, like, so heavy on that, right? Like, it's just like a rush when you get there and... Yeah. Can you speak about that? Um, yeah. So uh, there's actually been a lot of research to the um, adrenaline surges in public safety employees. Um, you know, just like even it start it starts at our station alerting system. So anybody who comes to our station sees a station alerting system. It starts off as visual with lights, and then an audio will ramp up slowly. Um, mm. It's supposed to help not give you the jolt of adrenaline, um, just for your long term health and also your focus for that incident. Um, Years years ago, it would just be a bell or a buzzer that would uh, kind of make you, you know, jump out of your seat real fast. Um, wow. And they were, you know, learning that some of those, uh, you know, some of those, um, it wasn't necessarily healthy for you. Um, so it's important to control our adrenaline. It's uh, depending on the incident. It can be. Uh, it can sometimes have to be a conscious decision. Um, you know, when we go to those. Uh, high risk, low frequency incidents. Sometimes it's important, especially as a uh, as a um, supervisor, to take a step back, take a breath, try to uh, try to really observe what's going on throughout the entire scene, mm. and uh, you know and make the best actions. Right, so you have one aspect <clears throat> of you know the fire department, which you've been a part of for so long, and something you've aspired to. So you also have. A life outside of the fire department, obviously. Yep. What's that like? Do you have a family? Or? I do, yep. So um, I'm uh, married um, to my wife, Rebecca. Uh, we live in Ashland. We have a uh, four and a half year old daughter and um, another one on the way, uh, expected oh, in, uh, yeah, thank you, in November. And uh, our dog, Luke. So <laughs> um, we're real close with our families. Um, I only live uh, right around the corner from my parents, and um, I have two sisters, and they both live close by. Um, they both have two kids, so it's nice. Uh, it's a lot of fun when all the kids play together. And, um, oh, that's so lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so lovely. Oh, and you have a new one on the way. That's, that's yep. amazing. And do you have any hobbies? Uh, yeah, so we're, uh, we're Cape Cod people. You know, we, lo <laughs> we love going down the Cape. Um, my family's had a, uh, you know, always had something down there. From when I was a little kid, my grandparents had a, okay. uh, had a place. And then um, after they, uh, you know, after they sold that, um, we camped. Uh, for probably 10 years down the Cape, and um, in probably about 15 years ago, um, my family got a, uh, a cottage in Mashpee, and they've since um, sold that and went to Falmouth. But uh, yeah, so down the Cape, we're big into uh, boating. So me and my father share a uh, share a fishing boat. Um, it's on a awesome. mooring in, Ma in in Mashpee, and uh, that's been kind of uh, that's been kind of a labor of love. Uh, partial addiction um, you know we've uh, we've we've uh, we've bought and sold I think like 15 boats in 15 years oh my uh, goodness yeah yeah so <laughs> we'll, we'll find something that needs some work work on it use it for a couple of years up uh, sell it upgrade um, so we've chipped our, we've chipped our way up from a uh, 17 foot boat to uh, a 30 foot that we have now oh my yeah that's awesome yeah. I, I grew up boating as well oh, on great. Cape Cod out oh, of excellent. out of Woods Hole so oh, it's, okay I, House in Falmouth. Oh, that's awesome. So was, I, I, yeah, so we've been, we've gone through Woods Hole a few times. It's a little terrifying. The bridge. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, everything. So, uh, uh, but um, where we are in Mashpee, it's uh, in Wakoya Bay, and uh, it's like the clo on the map. It's like the closest possible point from the mainland to the vineyard. Okay. So it's a lot of fun. So we'll shoot over to the vineyard uh, sometimes, yeah. or even just go out to the beach. Um, we're fair weather fishermen. We, we'll go out and we'll always attempt to fish. And, sure. Uh, yep. Yeah, and then when it doesn't, uh, <laughs> it doesn't go so well, uh, you know, then we'll take the kids to the beach and uh, or uh, go find a restaurant somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Great seafood. Yeah. Oh, it, uh, yep. Cape Cod. Come so. on. Uh, and you mentioned you bought and sold all these boats. Yep. I've heard that you also like antiques. 
Yeah, that. so uh, in Foxborough, like you did the uh, previous show, um, you know, I got involved in our antique fire apparatus. Um, you know, I guess it started when I was a call firefighter in Ashland. They had a uh, old uh, 1950s Mack truck, and uh, you know, I was still real new, but I got to learn how to drive it. Um, and it, it was just always there was always interest. And uh, then when we um, our mechanic um, Owen, um, firefighter mechanic Owen, he uh, he was able to get. Um, our 1938 Aaron's Fox from Foxboro back in back in town, um, which you, you helped us cover. Um, that was the town's first white fire truck. Yeah. And uh, it's funny. Shortly after that came back the last. I I shouldn't say last, but uh, back then the last red fire truck um, came up for sale. So yeah. we knew one of our retirees had it, and he posted it for sale. So we were actually able to muster up some funds and and uh, buy it off him and work on it and that's the one that's uh you know that's the one that um, I was able to take you for a ride in. it's been in founders yeah. day um yeah, yeah. so that's that's I, been a lot of fun i absolutely i enjoyed that i took a video of it it's yep. in the end credits of the you know yeah. of the the uh the it bit that i had done for uh uh the department so yep. i i that was very cool yeah very so cool. uh um in ashland um where uh you know I, I stayed on as a call firefighter being that i live in town um, they also had, so they had that one Mac antique, and they also had another one um, that my grandfather actually served on. No um, so yeah, so it had a you know, soft spot in my heart, and uh, Ashland's fortunate enough to have uh, the Community Preservation um, uh, Commission, and it's a, uh, it's a process through, um, ta uh, there's a portion of property taxes throughout town that goes towards um, maintaining his, uh, history and open space. Okay. So, um, and it's, de it's dedicated for those reasons. So we were able to apply um, for funding to restore that truck. Oh, so that awesome. truck's actually in the process of a full frame off restoration right now. Um, so it's, uh, that's gonna be great when that comes back. You know, something my grandfather actually worked and drove, um, you know, I'll be able to at least take for a ride myself. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. That's so cool. So you have family, you have uh, all these, seemingly great hobbies. Uh, you also like hunting, I also heard? Yeah, so my father's always, uh, you know, he always um, grew up uh, bird hunting. So upland birds, okay. pheasant hunting, I've always had bird dogs. So, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's always been a, a passion in the fall. Um, you know, my dog's, uh, he's getting old now, he's almost 11, um, but, uh, you know, he's a hunting dog. My father's always had hunting dogs. So um, it's something we've always been able to do together and uh, in the fall. And, it's been that's been a lot of fun as well. Hobbies, family, fire, yep. water. You know, yep. seemingly you have those two opposites, which honestly seem to balance out pretty yeah. well. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you are leaving Foxboro. You are going over to be the fire chief, fire chief in Southboro. Yeah, that's so a big deal. It is. Um, it's been a wave of emotions. So actually. Um, this morning, I came off my last shift here in Foxboro. Um, so at eight o'clock this morning is when I uh, last came off duty. I believe I'm on the, uh, I'm, on, I'm still in the books for a couple more days, but um, yeah, I start Monday um, in, in Southboro. So it's been, it's been, a, it's been a wave of emotions uh, thinking of leaving Foxboro. Um, mm. I'm not a resident. Um, I, I did live in town very briefly when I first got on, but uh, you know, I always kind of consider Foxboro home um, mm. to a certain extent. So. Um, you know, the thought of leaving was very challenging, but um, me and my wife, we sat down and, you know, we went through the pros and cons of uh, being, clo uh, being close to home, the, mm -hmm. uh, the, the advancement sure. in my career, and um, the, pro the pros outweighed the cons. Um, it's still a little scary. Uh, sure. I'm not a fan of change, so yeah. this is a big change, so yeah. um, only time will tell. Yeah. So you're a fire captain here in Foxboro. Correct. Can you tell, what's the difference between the fire captain position and the fire chief position that you're going to? So um, every town is a little bit, or um, any, any department community is a little bit different in how they work their roles. Um, Southboro and Foxboro are fairly similar in their rank structure. Um, as a captain here in Foxboro, I'm a shift commander. So there's four working shifts in the fire department. We work 24 hour shifts, 8 a.m. to 8 a.m. And I help um, lead a team of uh, a lieutenant and um, 
seven other firefighters. So where one of the shifts had operated nine, uh, nine people. Um, so I'm the, uh, I'm fortunate enough to be the supervisor that's out on the street, riding around on the fire truck, a ladder truck, um, showing up first to emergency calls and kind of, uh, you know, setting the initial, setting the initial stages of, uh, you know, incident mitigation, whether it's a medical or a fire call. Um, and then usually chief officers will follow, fall in behind and, uh, you know, help take, uh, you know, help take over some of the command roles. Mm. Um, where, uh, you know, fire chief or um, any chief uh, position, deputy assistant chief in Foxboro, um, they primarily serve as an administration role. They're setting, a, they're setting vision for the organization. Mm. So they're looking to see where they want the organization to go and, uh, and, how, are we gonna, and how are we gonna get there. So, um, you know, they're obviously tactical when, uh, you know, large scale incidents happen. But, um, you know, for the most part, they're, uh, you know, trying to be visionaries and uh, big, picture, big picture people. Yeah, wow. This, it, it sounds like a wonderful, you know, albeit change, but like yeah. it, it seems like also an appropriate maybe challenge, it you is. know, for you and growth opportunity yep. and for your career. Yep, it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna be great. Um, it's, uh, you know, the new position is definitely a little terrifying, um, but, um, I, you know, I, I'm confident. I have a great support network. Um, you know, I've already met a bunch of the guys over in Southboro. Um, so they, they've been great. So I'm really looking forward to working with them as a team moving forward. Um, the difficult part is just leaving what I know. So, uh, sure. you know, so um, my shift's group one and, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm blessed to have a, a great group of, of individuals that I work with. Um, so it's, uh, you know, I consider them all friends and I'll, con I'll continue to consider them friends, but it's, uh, you know, it's hard to walk away from, uh, the fire station is kind of your second family. So you have your family at home, and then at the fire station, it's a, it's a whole other family. So it's hard to uh, walk away from that. But, um, you know, they, they promised to keep me in the loop and uh, to keep me notified. And, uh, you know, and I, I, I'm going to make it a point to at least, you know, stop in and try to be around town here and there. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> and I know, I mean, we mentioned this before when we were chatting, before the cameras were rolling. But, you know, maybe in the future, you might maybe come over when Gillette you know, events happen or yeah, something like so, that? Yeah, uh, so Southboro firefighters do work um, events at Gillette. Um, some of the events at Gillette, uh, even, even a football game, um, we have uh, 31 firefighters on staff up at the stadium itself. Oh and uh, our department's <laughs> not big enough to, um, even if everybody worked, the department's not big enough to support that. Um, so we always bring in outside departments. And, uh, you know, over the years, we've branched out further and further. Um, just, you know, we, we're not necessarily looking for the, clo the uh, somebody in the town next door. We're, we're looking for the individuals that want to work and want to be up there. And, uh, and Southboro's been one of those towns. So uh, those guys work up there, you know, pretty regularly. So, uh, you know, hopefully in the future, um, you know, I'll be, I'll be afforded the opportunity as well um, to, you know, still, uh, you know, still stay in the mix. I'm sure that they'd love to see your face back around here, you know, alongside of all the firefighters that are, you know, still going to be here. Um, is there anything I missed that you wanted to? Uh, nothing particularly that you missed. Um, you know, I, I did, I, I, I meant to, I alluded to earlier, I meant to touch base. Um, you know, I mentioned that our 1928 Maxim was, um, we used to be able to call it our last red fire truck. Um, mm. But we're no able, to, we're not able to call it that anymore. Really? Um, no. Um, so I'm sure uh, a lot of people have seen it driving around town. We have a red tower truck now, and um, so unfortunately, our ladder truck was involved in a motor vehicle accident last summer. A um, drunk driver rear-ended it on the highway, um, oh, yeah. which it was, that. yeah, and um, you know the truck did exactly what it was supposed to do. We we bring the biggest, heaviest truck out to the interstate to help secure a scene and block a scene. Um, you know, people are driving, you know how fast people are driving the highway oh, yeah. and how fast you can come up to an accident and not realize. So we use the apparatus to protect ourselves while we're working. Right. And uh, the truck did just that. It, protect, it, it saved the lives of uh, uh, a couple uh, firefighters, a couple uh, police officers, and some tow truck workers. Oh my. Um, you know, so the tr truck took the brunt of it, but that's what it was for. Um, knowing we, that was going to be out for a repair for an extensive amount of time, um, we were able to uh, find and purchase a used tower truck. Um, so um, we were able to, uh, 
we were fortunately able to buy it and now can stay serving the town as a uh, as a spare reserve uh, ladder truck. So that's incredible. Uh, yeah, that it, you're it was, able to yeah. still do that. Yeah, and it's it's older. It's uh, it's a little over twenty years old. Um, but uh, I have a soft spot in my heart for it. I think it just cause I think it was just the story of how we found it. Sure. Um, we were able to uh, online we were able to find the truck, purchase it train everybody on it and have it in service within, uh, I think it was six weeks, one day after the accident. Oh my. Yeah. So we're able to really fast track it. It went great. Um, and uh, everybody really enjoys the truck. So, um, but uh, it's a great asset to have in town um, to be able to have that, um, that second aerial truck, especially with some of the bigger buildings, commercial buildings. Mm. Um, it's, uh, it, it, it proved its worth while our ladder truck was out getting repaired. Do you utilize them at the same time? Uh, no, if we had a major incident in town, we could, um, but typically uh, we'll only have one staffed or the other. Mm. Um, we did get our ladder truck back earlier this year. Um, it was out for eight to 10 months um, for the repair. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so it was, it was quite a while. Um, so um, it is back, it's in service. So the tower truck is, uh, you know, it's parked, it's parked inside facing out the back door, um, you know, Ready if needed, but uh, you know. Otherwise, it serves it serves as a great um, reserve piece of uh, equipment for us. Are those restorations done by like the mechanic that you have, Owen? I remember interviewing him. Yeah. That so that? Owen um, Owen is um, the he's a firefighter and he also serves as as the department's mechanic, and he uh, he works on. Um, other towns fire apparatus as well. So, uh, you know, the, the restoration of the antique, he helped out a lot. Um, and when we got the tower truck and brought that out in service, you know, he, having him, having him in the department was a reason we were able to make that happen. Mm. You know, to be able to buy, you know, an older truck and uh, make sure, uh, you know, it's mechanically sound and safe for the firefighters in the community. And I think I heard from somebody around town that it's also something that you can loan out to other towns? Yeah, or so we have, uh, so Mansfield actually borrowed it and loaned it out um, for uh, a couple weeks uh, just recently. Um, you know, it's a case by case basis, if uh, whether it's something that uh, we want to do or the other, other town wants to, but um, we've been on the receiving end of that before too. Mm. Um, Years ago, we we borrowed Wobble's spare ladder truck um, while our ladder was out being repaired. So uh, you know, it's it, it's it's great to be able to give back to another community sure. where in the past we've had to uh, be on the receiving end. Sure, this has been so great talking to you, especially right before you happened to be leaving Foxborough. And I'd first and foremost want to just say congratulations on your new position and the Thank new you. addition you have coming to your family in Thank November. You. I'm a November baby myself. Oh, excellent. So, you know, gotta, gotta love that fall, you know, fall babies I just. Excellent. <laughs> so, um, thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks for having me. I was uh, truly honored and flattered when you reached out to me and asked me to uh, be part of this. So I really appreciate the opportunity. I'm so glad we got, had the chance to sit down before you leave, uh, leave um, just in just a few days. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, thank you again and I am Jen Krenzman, uh, the host of The Ordinary Extraordinary, the store for ordinary people and their extraordinary stories. Stay safe out there, everyone. <laughs>